welcome back to our online classes in previous session we discussed chapter 3 production and costs question bank today we will discuss chapter 1 introduction to microeconomics very important question bank As you know students, exam point of view, the state board has prepared a very important question bank and it, it's very crucial to become super perfect in these objective questions. So the first part is choose the correct answer. The first question is, the scarce resources of any economy have, four options are given in front of you, any guess, the scarce resources or unlimited, limited resources of any economy have competi competing usages, single usages, unlimited usages or none of them. As you know, human wants are unlimited and resources to fulfill these human wants are limited so the correct answer is or the correct option for this question is a competing usages second which of the following is an example of microeconomic study micro means which deals with the individuals or the small units of the economy macro means aggregate which studies economy as a whole so in this the correct option is the example of microeconomic study is consumer behavior option B is the correct answer third one sorry central problems of an economy which includes option A what to produce B how to produce option C for whom to produce or option D all of them so the correct answer is I hope you got the correct answer the correct answer is all of the above so all these three problems are the central problems of any economy fourth one Traditionally, the subject matter of economics has been studied under the following bro broad branches. Which are the branches? Option A, micro and macroeconomics. Option B, positive and normative. Option C, deductive and inductive. Or your favorite option? Option D, none of the above. So the answer for this is? Traditionally, the subject matter has been studied broadly under the branch, branch micro and macroeconomics. So, this is your fill in, uh, choose the correct answer. Now, we'll move on to the next sub the sec second part that is fill in the blanks. The scarcity of resources gives rise to the problem of choice as I told the resources are limited and human wants are unlimited and these resources are having alternative uses so that is the reason why the problem of choice arises. second in a centrally planned economy all important decisions are made by centrally planned you may got you may get the hint or you may got the answer that in a centrally planned economy all important decisions are made by government government is the owner as well as decision maker in centrally planned economy next third one dash is a set of arrangements where economic agents can freely exchange their endowments or products with each other it's a market market is a set of arrangements where 
Economic agents can freely exchange their endowments or products with each other. Fourth one. In reality, all economies are. Students, as you know that, there are three types of economies in the world. Capitalistic, socialistic and mixed economies. But in reality, we will find that we will never find purely capitalistic and perfectly socialistic economic system. So what is the reality? It is the combination of both capitalistic and socialistic. So in reality, all economies are mixed economies. The best example for this is India. India is following mixed economy. I hope you understood all the four fill in the blanks. Going to the next part, that is third part, is your match the following. Market economy. Now, which is the best option or related to this concern to market economy is what? It is your private ownership. The correct match for market economy is private ownership because all the decisions, all the owners are private entrepreneurs. So, market economy, the correct match is private ownership. Next, service of a teacher. Second one, service of a teacher, which is the appropriate option in front of you. It is skill, skill and efficiency of a teacher. Okay. Service of a teacher is considered as skill and efficiency, where books, other notes can give you a knowledge or information, but to convert it into a knowledge and unforgettable experience can be given only by a good teacher. So, service of a teacher is what? It is a skill. Third one, centrally planned economy, as we discussed in fill in the blanks, centrally planned economy, the correct match for central planned economy is government, because government will take all the economic decisions and it is whole and soul in centrally planned economy. Fourth, positive economics. Positive economics just studies the economic things as it is. So, positive economics just tells us how the economy is functioning. Functioning is functioning of mechanism. How the mechanic or the things are moving on or all the factors of production are gainfully employed. So, it will be known by positive economics. Then fifth one, normative economics. So this normative economics will not only just study what it is, but also evaluate, pass the value judgments, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. So normative economics studies what ought to be or should be. So the correct match for normative economics is evaluate the mechanism. Going to the next part, one marks questions. First one, why does the problem of choice arise? An economic problem arises because we have to satisfy unlimited human wants out of limited resources. And these resources are having what? Alternative uses. That is the reason why the problem of choice arises. Second, what is market economy? An economy in which the means of production are owned, controlled and operated by the private sector is called market economy. What do you mean by centrally planned economy? An economy in which the means of production are owned, controlled and operated by the government is called centrally planned economy, also known as socialistic pattern of economy. The examples for this is China, Vietnam, North Korea, etc. So, market economy examples are USA, UK, Japan, Australia and almost our European countries. Next, fourth question. Give the meaning of microeconomics. MI, micro means small. 
the study of economic behavior of individual agents or individual consumer individual producer or price of a particular commodity a particular demand supply or individual sector whatever we are studying individuals it is all called microeconomics then aggregates macroeconomics next fifth one what do you mean by positive economics the study of what was and what it is under the given set of circumstances is called positive economics it will study the things or functioning or the activities going on in the economy as it is is called as positive economics and sixth one what is normative economics a normative economics is one which studies how the things in economy ought to be it is nothing but how they should be they will suggest what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad what is harmful and what is harmless so it will pass the judgment that is called as normative economics now moving to the next part two marks questions mention the central problems of an economy the first one is you have to mention the central problems of an economy you should be very careful while answering these questions read the questions twice mention means you have to just quote or write the names discuss or distinguish describe explain we have to explain it we have to compare with the question asked and the marks allotted now here the first question is mention the central problems of an economy you have to just mention which are the three problems the three central problems of an economy are first one is what to produce it is a problem of choice second how to produce it is a problem of technology whether to use the labor intensive technique or capital intensive or the combination of both third for whom to produce it is a problem of distribution so for whom you are distributing or fixing the price and what uh, type of consumers are prevailing in the market rich poor middle class very poor very rich so according to that for whom you are going to produce and distribute these resources these are your three central problems of an economy second distinguish between micro and macro economics micro economics studies the economic behavior of individual agents such as particular price particular demand a particular commodity supply individual sector there are three sectors primary secondary and tertiary if you are studying about only one sector it is called micro economics so it is microscopic view of the economy whereas macro economics studies the behavior of aggregates of the economy as whole such as economic national income we are not studying here individual income we are studying the aggregate of all the sectors income is called national income it may be aggregate output or employment total employment in the economy in all the sectors then foreign trade so all such aggregates what we are studying is called as macroeconomics so it is birds eye view of the economy it will consider all the elements in the economy i hope you understood the difference between micro and macro third one distinguish between positive and normative economics as we discussed positive economics deals with what it is or how the economic problems are actually solved it is based upon facts and thus it is not passing any value judgments or it is not suggesting anything so it is not suggestive normative economics deals with what ought to be or how the economic problems should be solved it is based upon individual opinion or group of people's opinion or the officials and therefore it is suggestive in nature
it will pass the value judgments next what do you mean by production possibility set the collection of all possible combinations of the goods and services that can be produced from a given amount of resources and a given stock of technological knowledge is called the production possibility set it is nothing but what it is the collection of all possible combinations of goods and services that can be produced from a available resources and with the available technological knowledge or technical know how so with these limitations what best possible production you are producing that is called a production possibility set fifth one what is opportunity cost a very important type of cost it is the cost of next best alternative sacrificed in order to produce a good for example a plot of land can be used for different purposes like agriculture purpose constructing factory or a school swimming pool anything but if you use land for factory community factory or you are using that land for factory purpose the community will be deprived of food or a school so here every wise producer should always calculate this opportunity cost which is the next best alternative which he is sacrificing to do this activity next what is the production possibility frontier a graphical representation of all the possible combinations of two goods that can be produced with the given resources and technology is called production possibility frontier production possibility set shows the possibility of producing or the list of goods and services can be produced but production possibility frontier shows graphically the same thing where what are the possible combination of two goods that can be produced with the given resources and technology so this is graphical representation and that is the definition of production possibility set i hope you understood these all the four parts going to the next part four marks questions where the first one is briefly explain how the family firm weaver teacher can use their resources to fulfill their needs in a simple economy so it's discussed in our previous slides how this four marks or all these agents they use their available resources to fulfill their day to day needs and second explain briefly explain the production possibility frontier we have taken some imaginary values and we have plotted those values on the diagram and we will get the production possibility frontier and third one briefly explain the central problems of an economy so you need to explain all these three problems with examples what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce which carries four marks then fourth one write a short note on a centrally planned economy here we need to as i told the examples of the central planned economies and what is the status of central planned economy you have to elaborate or explain in briefly and prepare one short note on central planned economy and fifth fifth one write a short note on market economy which is opposite of centrally planned economy so here students the point to be noted that in chapter 1 you don't have six marks and five marks project oriented questions so you are going to get only the questions in the examination up to four marks section a section b and c you don't have section d and section e i hope you understood the chapter 1 all the questions okay so in next class we'll take on the next chapter chapter 2 question bank thank you